Hello dear students. Today we are going to talk about peripheral vascular diseases, necrosis, gangrene, trophic ulcer, bed sores and fistulas. So let us first talk about the occlusive, uh, occlusive arterial diseases of the limbs, peripheral that is occlusive arterial diseases. Actually, it's a common condition which is caused by acute or cro chronic interruption of blood supply of the limbs. And mostly we, think we see these patients uh, in the group who are above 65 years old. What is the etiology of this condition? Mostly it's atherosclerosis, thrombosis, embolism, vascular trauma, and Burgers disease. The risk factor for these conditions, first of all, it's smoking. Then patients who have hypertension, i.e. increased level of arterial blood pressure in, in blood pressure, and also patients with hyperlipidemia who have in blood increased amount of lipids. Also patients with diabetes mellitus. As I said before, there are mainly two conditions, acute and chronic ischemia. And let us make differentiation between these two conditions. Acute ischemia has sudden onset. It means that patient didn't have any problem with the vessels, but suddenly he felt severe pain in the limb and these symptoms can occur and can continue from several hours up to 15 days. What about chronic ischemia? In chronic ischemia, patient have long history of some problems like for example intermittent claudication, we will talk about this later, and these symptoms continue more than 15 days. And also there is third type of this disease. It's acute on chronic ischemia. What does it mean? It means that patient had long history of claudication, for example, but suddenly he felt worsening of all symptoms, and it's caused by the thrombosis of the of stenosed vessel. So, what are the symptoms of acute and chronic limb, low limb ischemia? In acute one, patient feel severe pain and also feel the uh, changing in sensation like a paresthesia. Also patient can uh, feel, for example, poikilothermia, can have poikilothermia. What does it mean? It means the uh, inability to regulate the temperature. Uh, and also uh, during examination we don't, uh, we can find, we don't, uh, we can find this um, pulse with, which is called pulse list. Uh, because of the black uh, blockage of the artery and we can't uh, find this pulse uh, knee under the place of the blockage. In chronic is long, low limb ischemia, a patient has uh, this, also he has pain, but his pain uh, it uh, develops gradually. For example, uh, first of all, he feels uh, pain when uh, during walking, for example, but then uh, this pain also can be at rest. It's the uh, latest, latest uh, stage of uh, this condition. So what are the patho pathophysiology of the uh, acute and chronic low limb ischemia? In acute one, of course, it's embolus or thrombosis uh, of an artery. And it has, uh, as we said, sudden occlusions. It has uh, so so. There is no time. Uh, there is no time for formation collateral. So these uh, patients can have uh, development of gangrene uh, in very very little period of time. But in chronic one, also a patient can have uh, gangrene of the limb, but uh, it will be developed after some period of time, at the la latest stage of this disease. So uh, the cause of the low limb ischemia, chronic one, uh, mostly is atherosclerosis. And uh, uh, after some period of time in chronic low limb ischemia, metabolic change will be developed. Why? Because of the disparity between the demand and supply of oxygen. So it leads to um, changing in metabolism uh, and uh, tropical change and then uh, maybe formation of ulcers, tropical and uh, at the end of this, at the la last stage, it's uh, development of gangrene. So um, 
During physical examination, what are the signs of uh, acute and chronic low limb ischemia? Uh, we talked about this, but uh, again, uh, I will say that uh, in acute one, it's pain, pallor, paresthesia, mottling of the skin, paralysis, it's uh, the, uh, changing in motor function, and also poikilothermia. And very important that we can't find, as I said, we can't find uh, the pulse under the place of blockage, uh, in distal, but distally of the place of the blockage. In chronic low limb ischemia, also we see pale and cool limb, and, uh, but uh, mostly we can see here some tropical change. Uh, pulse will be, but uh, maybe it will be weak. And uh, sometimes also we see guttering of the veins. In these patients, it's uh, very important to say that this patient has angle of vascular insufficiency. What does it mean, Bor Borges' as, uh, angle of the vascular ins insufficiency? It means that um, healthy, in healthy, in healthy, healthy limb can be raised uh, up to 90 uh, degrees without any change in uh, the color of the skin, but uh, when there are problems in the vascularization, this patient, this limb will be blanched, will blanch, and uh, mostly the angle uh, in which this, all these changes are, uh, occurs, they, uh, it's uh, about 20 degree or may maybe less, and uh, it means that there is ischemia, chronic ischemia of the limb, uh, of the low limb. So, which methods are used for the examination of those patients? Uh, the easiest method is uh, the um, estimation of ankle brachial pressure index. And uh, also, but um, of course it's not so in informative. And uh, we will talk about this method later. Uh, also, arterial duplex scan is used. But uh, the most informative method is angiogram, angiography, and uh, angiography, and uh, digital CT angiography and MR uh, angiography. So let us talk about acute arterial occlusion. What is this? Acute arterial occlusion is the con uh, condition which is caused with, um, with by sudden uh, occlusion uh, arrest of the blood supply to the limb. And it's common as cause of the gangrene. Uh, mostly, you can see in this picture, you can see uh, patients uh, with, with uh, acute uh, ischemia. You can see here pale uh, color, then uh, cyanosis of the limb. Uh, and what are the symptom, symptoms of acute ischemia? First of all, it's, uh, I mean during examination, first of all, it's, of course, it's uh, absence of uh, pulsation, as we said. Uh, decreased sensations and also uh, motor dysfunction, inability to move toys. Uh, here in th this picture also you can see the patient with acute limb ischemia. Uh, let, uh, let us talk about the reasons of um, art acute arterial uh, uh, limb ischemia. Uh, mostly it's embolism and thrombosis, uh, but uh, they have uh, so we have to differentiate them. Uh, actually, acute arterial embolism uh, is developed in a healthy artery, but thrombosis in diseased artery. So, and the third type is acute traumatic ischemia, trauma, due to trauma. In this picture, you can see the angiogram of the patient who has the blockage of uh, right iliac artery. And as you can see in this picture, there is no vascularization uh, under the place of the blockage. So, and uh, without, uh, without uh, interfere, without uh, treatment, this patient, uh, in this patient, gangrene will be developed in very, uh, very little period of time. Uh, so what do we see in this patient? Um, let us talk about this. Uh, first of all, uh, remember, students, that these patients have the uh, five, P -S -S sim five P, uh, P symptoms. What does it mean? It means that uh, they have five symptoms 
which begin from the letter P. It's uh, pale, pulseless, paresthesia, and paralysis. Uh, these symptoms are common in all uh, patients with acute ischemia. Uh, during inspection, we see pale, but um, uh, in early stage, and then we see cyanosis, uh, cyanosis uh, of the limb. Uh, another symptoms, another symptoms are revealed uh, uh, during palpation. What do we see? We see absence of the pulse, as I said before, uh, under the place of blockage. And then uh, the change in the temperature of the lo locally in this part, and also uh, we can reveal his, uh, the, here a uh, slow capillary refilling. It means that when uh, we uh, make pressure to some part of the uh, ischemic area, there is, we, we can see the uh, re refilling of the capillaries uh, in this uh, site. So, uh, and uh, about uh, sensations of this, what, the, uh, what do they feel? They feel paresthesia, as I said before. Uh, they sometimes, uh, there are changes in sensation. They feel change in sensation. Uh, and uh, of, of course, uh, also they feel deep pain and, uh, and uh, numbness and etc. Uh, and uh, the uh, last symptom is paralysis. Uh, it's a motor dysfunction, as we said, uh, the inability to move toys. This uh, method, uh, Doppler uh, ultrasonography, it's uh, used for the uh, examination of these patients with a problem, with an artery problem. And uh, uh, other method is, as I said before, it's uh, measuring, it's estimating of ankle brachial index. What, what is this? It's uh, the difference between uh, arterial blood pressure in uh, ankle uh, and uh, in brachial, so uh, brachial part uh, side. And uh, this index, in, uh, normally it has to be not less than one. But if it's from 07 to 09, it means that a patient has uh, mild disease. From 05 to 06, it's moderate disease. And uh, under uh, 0.5, it's severe disease. So students, as I said before, uh, to uh, examine this patient, to examine arteries, uh, the arteries, uh, ultrasonography is used, and uh, uh, but uh, more informative is duplex ultrasound than simple, and uh, of course arteriography, uh, angiography, as as uh, we say, and uh, when after the uh, we made uh, we have made diagnosis of. Uh, arterial um, block, uh, blockage of the arteries, we have to treat this patient immediately uh, because we don't have uh, much time uh, because of the development of uh, the, probably this patient will have uh, gangrene. That's why we have to treat immediately. So what are the aim of the therapy is, first of all, of course, it's a restoration of uh, blood supply and uh, preserve, to preserve limb. Um, and then uh, prevent uh, prevention of recurrent thrombosis. But if patient has already gangrene, uh, our aim is uh, to preserve his life. So uh, for this uh, condition, for this case, we have to make amputation of the limb to, because only this surgery can save the life of the patient. So treatment of uh, arterial uh, occlusive, the uh, acute arterial occlusive disease in, include uh, the uh, use of thromb thrombolytics and also providing immediate care and surgery. Uh, here we can say the next. Uh, first of all, of course, thrombolytics. Uh, which uh, drugs are used for this treatment? Uh, of course, it's anticoagulants. Uh, so, uh, and uh, to, for immediate care, we uh, make anticoagulants, we make analgesia, and uh, also we use special drugs to uh, improve uh, exist existing perfusion of the limbs. And if patient has problems with the heart, uh, we have to treat these uh, conditions too. Uh, there is one method, it's uh, 
catheter directed thrombolysis. Uh, it means that uh, we insert special catheter uh, to the uh, arterial tree and uh, pass this catheter uh, until the place of the blockage and then uh, insert special drugs, special thrombolytics uh, directed to this place. But uh, it can be used in some cases. For example, it can, it, it, it's not suitable for uh, embolism, but it can uh, be used uh, in limbs who have, uh, who, which uh, has uh, some uh, vascularization. And uh, it, it can be used in patients who have uh, some other contra contraindications. Uh, uh, but uh, the main principle, the main uh, therapy is surgery, uh, thrombolytics and surgery. Surgery uh, is divided to uh, two types. It's uh, operative revascularization, uh, it's uh, minimally invasive methods, and amputation. It's radical surgical operation. Uh, what is um, a minimally inv invasive sur uh, surgery? What's operative revascularization? Uh, for example, uh, this is Fogarty balloon catheter, catheter which is used uh, for the removing of embols from the artery. Uh, and other methods, for example, for mechanical thrombectomy can be used. Uh, and uh, uh, these are uh, mostly surgical methods. And also in here, in this uh, picture, you can see the uh, restoration of the uh, lumen of the vessel with special stent, uh, which was inserted uh, through a special catheter. Now, students, uh, we, we came to uh, the explanation of chronic uh, low uh, limb ischemia. Uh, as we said before, these uh, symptoms in these patients, uh, they uh, are developed uh, in the a period of time more than two weeks and uh, it has gradually progressive uh, development and uh, decrease in tissue perfusion. So there are two main uh, reasons, two main causes of this uh, problem is atherosclerosis, uh, mostly atherosclerosis and also uh, thrombangitis ablitrans which has another name is Burgers disease. So what's atherosclerosis? Atherosclerosis, uh, I think uh, you know good about this disease. It's systemic disease and it's a complex, a complex inflammatory disease of elastic and uh, muscular layers of the arteries. Uh, in this disease, uh, special lipid uh, plaque uh, is formed in the uh, wall of, ather, uh, of the uh, vessel and it uh, makes this vessel be narrowed. So, uh, mostly uh, damaged uh, arteries are a uh, pharyngeal part of the abdominal aorta, uh, iliofemoral and popliteal arteries. And uh, here I want to say that um, damage uh, by atherosclerosis of uh, aorta iliac segment, uh, segment uh, is called Lerich syndrome. And here you can see different types of Lerich syndrome and uh, it uh, depends on the you know, place of the uh, blockage of the artery. So, uh, other uh, cause of the uh, chronic limb ischemia, as I said, is uh, Burgers disease or thrombangitis ablitrans. What is, what is this? Uh, this disease is uh, also inflammatory, but it's non atherosclerotic and uh, it uh, involves, uh, it damage to uh, medium-sized and distal uh, vessels uh, can be arteries and veins both in later stage also nerves will be damaged uh, too and uh, mostly we see this uh, disease in male patients in males uh, who smoke and uh, of young and middle age uh, it's uh, autoimmune uh, disease and uh, of course uh, also it can be seen uh, in uh, the people who have some problems with the uh, formation of collagen. So what's the pathogenesis of Burgers disease? Pathogenesis of this disease is like, uh, uh, I mean, in patients who, who smoke. First of all, during smoking, you know that special uh, toxic product, nic uh, nicotine, uh, it's um, 
So nicotine uh, contributes to uh, formation of uh, the release of noradrenaline, uh, nor uh, and uh, then it uh, go to uh, it um, cause the uh, spasm of the vessels, and at the same same time also nicotine damage to uh, endothelium and cause inflammation septic inflammation, uh, edema, and also then thrombosis and obliteration of the vessel. At the li latest stage, as I said, uh, both arteries, veins, and also nerves uh, are damaged uh, by this process. And uh, patients, of course, have uh, severe pain here too. So, um, there are several classification uh, of chronic lip ischemia, and now uh, I want to say, uh, I want to show you some of them. Um, so, and um, one of these um, uh, classification is uh, rather focus, rather fourth classification. Uh, here, the symptoms uh, from asymptomatic to major tissue loss. Loss. Uh, another uh, classification. Uh, it explains the symptoms from, uh, from stage, uh, include four stage from asymptomatic to uh, the uh, fourth stage uh, with ulceration and gangrene. Also, there is uh, some uh, classification that you have know about, uh, classification of claudication. Uh, that, uh, it, uh, it shows that patient uh, has pain first of all during walking, on walking, but then at the first stage, uh, this uh, pain uh, uh, he, he disappeared because of uh, uh, washing away of substance P. Substance P is neuromediator. And uh, then uh, in uh, second stage, uh, he will have pain uh, every time during walk, uh, but in first stage, he will have pain even at rest too. And also, uh, again, another classification, uh, it will be informative for you that uh, also the uh, stage of uh, ischemia it's that in first stage uh, pain uh, develop on uh, after 500 meters in second uh, after 200 meters in first stage after 20 or 30 meters meters or at rest and fourth stage is uh, also al always ulcers gangrene necrosis and uh, other complications so symptoms uh, of the uh, disease in patients with chronic uh, limb ischemia are, the, uh, follow are uh, those that um, most of them have intermittent claudication, have, uh, as, as, I, as we said before, uh, bef uh, on walking, then uh, at rest. Uh, then also they have paresthesia, they have uh, weak pulse, uh, they have thinning of the skin, so pallor and uh, then uh, atrophy of the subcutaneous uh, layer and uh, um, sometimes they have ulcer and gangrene. Um, a level of uh, part of the, uh, uh, depending on the place of the blockage, uh, patient will have pain in some parts of the body, for example, uh, if uh, it will be, for example, blockage of femoral artery, uh, patient will feel pain uh, in thigh, or, or, or example, in popliteal artery, in low third uh, calf, uh, then in iliac, uh, for example, it's buttock, and etc. Uh, so what should we do to examine uh, these patients with uh, chronic low ischemia? Of course, there are routine methods uh, like, uh, for example, uh, hemogram. Uh, what uh, hemogram can show us? Uh, it can show us, for example, low level of hemoglobin. Uh, so then, uh, if there is, uh, there are some inflammation. Uh, infl uh, there, there are, for example, infectious complications. We, we can see leukocytosis or increased. Uh, 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 erythrocyte sedimentation rate also, and uh, um, sometimes in, patient, uh, in patients who have uh, diabetes, diabetes mellitus, of course, increased amount of uh, blood sugar. Um, many people, many patients have increased amount of lipids, as we say, hyperlipidemia, and uh, so for all of these, we have to make uh, routine uh, laboratory methods. Uh, investigation of the blood. Uh, other methods, um, this is instrumental methods, yes, uh, in these patients, 
uh, very important to know clinical symptoms and or to provide instrumental uh, methods of examination of patients. In, in here, uh, uh, sonography, uh, Doppler sonogra sonography and duplex uh, imaging uh, are used, but the most effective and widely used uh, method is, um, of course, in angiography and different, uh, so there are some different types of angiography, for example, uh, free fluid arteriography or selective or uh, maybe di di digital angiogram, CT, MR. Uh, so here about uh, retrograde transfemoral uh, Seldinger angi angiography, I want to talk about this, uh, give information what is it is. Uh, it's uh, when we insert special catheter through the femoral artery until uh, the place of the blockage uh, and uh, make, uh, we make them provide angiography. Here, for example, you can see digital uh, arteriogram uh, of the right uh, of the patient and blockage of the right common iliac artery. You can see here artery because of the bl blockage of this part. So, to treat this patient, uh, of course, uh, medical treatment is used and surgery treatment. Uh, medical therapy uh, includes uh, the uh, use of uh, the drugs uh, which uh, decrease the amount of lipids in blood and uh, uh, decrease uh, the level of arterial blood pressure uh, uh, and then uh, the drugs uh, which uh, make normally uh, sugar, uh, the level of sugar in blood, and also uh, anticoagulants and uh, the drugs from this group. And as I, as I said before, uh, one of the uh, important, uh, most important maybe uh, method here is surgical treatment. And there are, uh, as I said also before, minimally invasive surgery and uh, open surgery. Uh, so from minimally invasive uh, angio angioplasty is used, for example, uh, endarterectomy uh, and it's, uh, it's endarterectomy is open uh, method of a surgery. Uh, so but there are, of course, there are some types, open, semi-close and etc. But it's, uh, it means that it's open surgery. It's not minimally invasive, it's uh, without, uh, we do it without uh, large incision. Uh, um, uh, with interfere to the vessel, but uh, in uh, open surgery, of course, we make incision, we find uh, vessel and make some uh, uh, provide some surgeries on this vessel. So, what are them? Uh, it can be femoral, uh, as I said, endarterectomy. Uh, it can be femoroplasty, and I, now I'm going to uh, show you these uh, pictures of uh, all of these. Uh, it can be uh, the uh, plasty of uh, the vessel with graft. Graft can be autograft uh, where uh, sa uh, saphenous vein is used and also it can be synthetic and uh, uh, also it can be arterial graft. From surgery also lumbar, lumbar sympathectomy is used. Why? Uh, it, used, it is used for the uh, release of uh, spasm, to take uh, spasm in vessels and uh, also omentoplasty for the healing of the ulcers and the um, method of radical method of the uh, gang uh, treating of gangrene is of course amputation. Uh, it's uh, being done for the uh, safe of patient's life. So now I'm going to show you some methods of uh, the surgical treatment. As we said before, is for example angioplasty. Uh, is minimal invasive method. Uh, this, uh, as you can see here, special balloon is inserted to the uh, vessel and it pass, uh, it's passed through the place of the uh, blockage with atherosclerosis with a lipid plaque and it's damaged to this plaque and then uh, that's why uh, it's helped to uh, uh, it's, uh, it's helped to open the lumen of the vessel and at the end of the surgery special stent uh, is placed in this place of the in this uh, bl blockage place uh, to um, uh, restore uh, vascularization of the limb 
Uh, here also you can see the uh, methods of angioplasty. Uh, as I said before, special stent uh, is placed to the uh, place uh, to the um, uh, atherosclerotic uh, um, plaque uh, uh, between uh, two parts of atherosclerotic uh, plaque. The next, uh, here also you can see on angiogram, you can see the stent here, which helps uh, to uh, restore the vascularization of the limb, the blood supply. And uh, this method, as uh, I said before, it's femoral endarterectomy. It means uh, that uh, uh, removing of the, uh, for example, uh, this, uh, of, uh, uh, internal part uh, of end of, uh, internal part of the vessel uh, with a uh, lipid plaque uh, it's open way it's open method and uh, other method is uh, making prosthetic uh, is uh, placing a prosthetic uh, for example this is aorta uh, iliac uh, bifurcation and uh, here also saphenous vein, as I said before, autograph can be used, as you can see, it's used like collateral and blood will come from a healthy part of the artery to the uh, other distal healthy part and uh, blockage place, place of the blocking will be here. And also synthetic grafts uh, are used, for example, this is a method, it's uh, called autofemoral bypass graft. It's used for the uh, restoration of uh, blood supply. And as I said before, uh, lumbar synthetectomy to uh, make uh, vasodilatation and uh, to improve circulation, omentoplasty for the healing of the ulcers and amputation if patient has gangrene and uh, we can't uh, save this limb, but we can save the life of the patient, so we should do uh, amputation. And mostly it's being done uh, on the level of the third uh, distal uh, part of the die, and uh, as I said, it's aimed to save the patient's life. So, uh, we have finished about the uh, arterial diseases, uh, as I said, there are acute and chronic limb ischemia, and I tried to give uh, you information about uh, symptoms, about uh, examination, and about treatment of these conditions. And now we are going to talk about the uh, disease of veins. So, uh, what about uh, phlebitis? First of all, let us talk about phlebitis and thrombophlebitis. What is phlebitis? Uh, phlebitis, as you know, uh, it's uh, the disease of the veins, it's uh, inflammation of the veins. Uh, but thrombophlebitis, it's inflammation with formation of thrombus. Uh, so, patient can have uh, separately from uh, thrombitis or uh, he can have thrombophlebitis. Uh, mostly thrombophlebitis uh, is uh, superficial, can be superficial, but sometimes it's also deep. Uh, it can uh, be in uh, deep veins. Um, and also, uh, I'm uh, I want to uh, give attention to this, that also there is an, uh, one term is a thrombophlebitis uh, thrombosis. It means that uh, in uh, there, there will be a formation of the thromb without inflammation. And uh, so thrombophlebitis, how can we see this thrombophlebitis, especially superficial, we can see it. Uh, thrombophlebitis uh, mostly it uh, uh, relate, uh, relates to uh, varicose veins and we can see it like uh, heart uh, and cord uh, like veins and uh, we see hyperemia, we see it's very painful, we see tenderness in this part. Uh, thrombophlebitis uh, can be dangerous. Uh, in case of ascendant thrombophlebitis, it means that this thrombus can pass uh, to the uh, deep veins, and you know that um, uh, thrombus in deep veins, it's very dangerous conditions, or condition, why? Because this clot, this thrombus can go to the uh, heart 
part of the heart, uh, right part of the heart, and then uh, can go to the pulmonary artery. And if it will be stay, if uh, it uh, will stay in the trunk of uh, pulmonary artery, it can cause death uh, in a moment. So that's why it's very dangerous condition, as I said before. So. Uh, Superficial thrombophlebitis, as I said, it's uh, mostly it uh, refers to uh, varicose veins. Also, we can see it in uh, lower extremity, uh, lower and upper extremity. How can we see in upper? Uh, what is the cause of the thrombophlebitis of upper extremity? Mostly, it's uh, intravenous catheter. You know that uh, for the, for example, uh, uh, some injections or for transferring of some solutions, we put special catheter to the vein and we can put and uh, place, uh, and if it will be there more than, for example, uh, two days, it will, uh, it, uh, it will stay there more than two days, uh, superficial thrombophobitis uh, of the veins uh, can be developed. Uh, so, uh, and uh, in low extremities, as I said, mostly we see it uh, in patients who have varicose disease of the veins, superficial veins, and uh, what is the treatment of this condition? First, uh, it's uh, in upper extremity mostly it's uh, anti-inflammatory uh, drugs and uh, local uh, some creams, uh, uh, maybe uh, analgesics and etc. In low extremity also it's uh, uh, anti-inflammatory drugs. It's uh, uh, maybe some uh, compresses, warm compresses, and, uh, but uh, if we see that this uh, uh, thrombus has, uh, I mean, it can pass through the deep vein, we have to make surgery. Uh, surgery is uh, that we have to ligate superficial vein, we have to ligate saphenous vein in the place of junction, uh, in the place where it goes to the deep vein, uh, and uh, it can save the patient's life. So in this picture you can see thrombophobitis of saphenous vein and as I said before uh, we have to ligate this uh, vein here in the place of the uh, passing to deep vein. So other disease of the veins, it's uh, of, uh, of uh, superficial veins, are uh, varicose disease, uh, varicose veins. Uh, varicose, the cause of uh, the varicose disease is the damage to valvular uh, apparatus of the uh, veins, superficial veins. Uh, actually, let us talk about this. Uh, what uh, is the aim of uh, valves uh, which are uh, located in the superficial veins? Uh, you know that uh, the aim of these uh, valves is to pass blood uh, from distal parts of the uh, superficial tissues of uh, low extremity uh, to deep vein. Uh, this blood uh, has, uh, it is rich with uh, carbon dioxide and uh, also it's uh, rich with uh, some toxic uh, products. So, and uh, but uh, in the problems when there are problems with the valves, uh, this blood can be passed from the uh, distal part of the limb to the deep vein, and so uh, every time it will, this blood changed blood will stay in the uh, there uh, will uh, cause trophical change, and uh, that's uh, why these patients sometimes have trophic ulcers, uh, and uh, uh, they have to be treated. Uh, both conservatively and uh, by surgical methods. So this uh, stasis of the blood in superficial veins due to the damage of the valvular apparatus is called, uh, as you can see here, reflux. Uh, so this, uh, what are the symptoms of varicose disease? Mostly it's uh, pain, in, uh, it's uh, not so severe, but uh, most of patients, uh, most of patients have pain, edema, swelling, tropical change, ulceration. Uh, uh, which, which is also tropical change, and um, you know, we, we uh, visually we can see these veins. Uh, we can see only enlarged uh, branch of the veins. We can see, for example, saphenous vein, uh, but uh, we can see a branch, a large branch of these uh, uh, veins, uh, superficial veins. 
And what is the treatment of varicose disease? There are three main treatments. Uh, one is the uh, most popular method, it's endovenous, endovenous laser ablation or radiofrequency ablation. It's, uh, uh, both of them, uh, also, uh, they are minimally invasive surgery. Uh, we don't do, again, large incision. We insert special catheter, uh, special laser, or uh, we uh, insert to the vein, a saphenous vein, and this uh, laser uh, coagulates uh, this uh, vein from inside and uh, cause the uh, closing of this vein after some period of time. Uh, and other method is foam therapy, foam at uh, inserting of special uh, drugs to the uh, lumen of the vessel, uh, which stick them and close their lumen, but it's uh, useful only for uh, the um, for the vessels of uh, little diameter, especially it's very useful to, for the treatment of enlarged capillaries. And uh, uh, the la uh, last method is surgery, open surgery method, uh, when uh, we uh, ha have to find the place where saphenous vein go to the deep vein and uh, ligate, uh, cut this, and then remove this vein from the leg uh, with a special device. So here in this picture you can see varicose veins, as I said, uh, this is not saphane then, this is a branch of saphane then that can be visible. And uh, the, here you can see the leg before treatment, before surgical treatment, and after uh, this treatment you can see the results of the surgical treatment. Uh, so, in, uh, uh, next our uh, disease uh, about which I'm going to exp talk to you, it's a vein, a deep vein thrombosis. It's a very dangerous condition for the patient, as I said before, because of the, uh, because of the uh, ability to uh, close the pulmonary artery. And uh, so there are three uh, there are three conditions uh, which uh, lead to. Uh, formation of uh, deep vein thrombosis. Uh, first of all, it's uh, endothelial damage, damage to endothelium. And ne uh, next one is hypercoagulability, and uh, the third one is stasis. These uh, symptoms are called uh, Virchow's tri triade. So, and uh, what, uh, let us talk about this disease. What is this? Uh, what will happen during this disease? Uh, so, as I said, it's a damage, first of all, uh, uh, very, uh, it's very necessary that in this uh, disease uh, endothelium is damaged. It can be damaged by, uh, uh, during special disease like autoimmune disease, Burgess disease, Takayasu, uh, Renoin, etc. Uh, so, hypercoagulability is caused by also autoimmune disease like uh, antiphospholipid syndrome, for example, or dysfibrinogenemia, and etc. And uh, stasis, it's caused by uh, hyperviscosity and maybe some neurological uh, disorders and mu uh, uh, losing of the motor function of the muscles and etc. So, um, where uh, and uh, what do we do? Uh, so, and uh, let us talk about this, that uh, who is in the risk group for different thrombosis? As I said, uh, it's very dangerous, life threatening condition. So, uh, patients, first of all, patients who have or who will have uh, major surgery, uh, who have uh, some malignant tumors, uh, trauma, and also uh, these uh, all these people, they have um, the risk of uh, formation of the thrombus in deep veins. That's why we have to make some prophylactic measures to prevent this condition. What do we do? Uh, we uh, use special elastic stockings. Uh, to why do we use them? Because we um, uh, make pressure to the sinus, sinuses which are located in the uh, muscles of the calf, and uh, we prevent uh, the stasis of the blood in these veins. And that's why we uh, reduce the risk of uh, thrombus formation there. So, and uh, 
uh, all, uh, another method is uh, giving anti of, uh, anticoagulants, very important to uh, inject patients anticoagulants like low dose heparins and uh, in, if patients have uh, the uh, very great risk of uh, thrombosis, uh, we can use also warfarin uh, anticoagulants, anticoagulant warfarin. So what's the treatment of the disease? Uh, mostly it's better to make prophylaxis, but uh, if uh, already thrombus uh, was formed in the vein and uh, patient have uh, symptoms of uh, deep vein thrombosis, uh, as uh, for example, uh, severe pain, uh, swelling, uh, paler, uh, pale skin, and uh, etc. Uh, sometimes cyanosis also may be uh, in this case, we have to make treatment, first of all, is of course, it's conservative treatment, but it uh, depends on the place of the thrombosis. For example, uh, isolated uh, cuts, uh, sinus thrombi, uh, it uh, doesn't need um, to make uh, anticoagulant therapy, but uh, if it's in distal part of the femur uh, on the thigh, we make anticoagulation. If it's uh, in upper part, uh, which uh, and all these um, conditions can be uh, revealed by uh, Doppler or uh, Doppler, uh, or, or, or it can be also uh, can be revealed with a special uh, method which is called flebography. And uh, if it's in proximal part, we have to do uh, anticoagulant therapy and also uh, put special filters, special. Uh, devices to the uh, inferior cava vein. It's, uh, these filters, they avoid of um, this uh, thrombus to go to the heart and then to the pulmonary uh, artery, as we said before. And in this picture, you can see uh, different uh, types of these cava filters that are used to uh, the treatment of uh, deep vein thrombosis and for prevention of uh, pulmonary artery embolism if patients have uh, thrombosis. So uh, our next uh, topic is about chronic venous insufficiency. It's also we uh, call them post-thrombotic or, or post-phlebotic syndrome. Uh, it, uh, it's developed in patient uh, it, uh, in patient who have uh, history of uh, deep vein thrombosis, and um, so. Uh, what is this? What is this uh, chronic venous insufficiency and uh, what are the symptoms of this condition? Uh, and what is the reason? The reason is uh, valve insufficiency, the uh, damage to valve, valve insufficiency. And due to this, uh, uh, the increased blood, uh, venous pressure lead to uh, passing the fluid, uh, lymph uh, fluid uh, rich, which is rich in protein to the uh, adjacent uh, tissues and uh, uh, then uh, gradually it, uh, it, uh, it leads to uh, uh, a hypoxia, to formation of uh, tropical change and then uh, to uh, metabolic change and then to fibrosis and at the uh, la later stage uh, liposclerosis. Uh, so and uh, also, uh, patients with this uh, syndrome have, uh, in most cases, they have brown color of the skin, and uh, the cause of this that um, uh, microscopic hemorrhage uh, lead to the accumulation of hemosiderin, and that gives uh, the, to the skin brown color. And here you can see uh, brown. You can see here brown color of the skin. Here you can see trophic ulcer. This is varicose disease and etc and uh, what uh, sh so and other symptoms uh, are swelling as i said uh, and uh, tenderness swelling uh, many of these patients have uh, tropical change tropical ulcers that are located mostly above medial malolas um, and uh, here as you can see and uh, also patients they have chronic edema uh, so what should we do to treat? How to do we treat this condition? First of all, of course, compression. 
uh, in many uh, venous and uh, lymphatic problems, problems of uh, veins and uh, lymphatic uh, problems in lymphatic system, we use compression, uh, we use special elastic stockings. Uh, so also elevation of the limb helps to reduce edema uh, and sometimes some surgical uh, uh, surgical uh, surgical ligation of perforating veins and uh, also the uh, reconstruction of the vein surgical reconstruction of the vein also can be effective if uh, other conservative method methods are uh, ineffective so uh, and uh, that uh, was all about arteries and veins and our next topics uh, topic will be about lymphedema uh, so, what is lymphedema? Lymphedema is the accumulation of the uh, lymph, that is the uh, fluid uh, rich in protein, protein uh, and it's caused by the uh, problems in lymph nodes uh, or problems in lymphatic vessels. So, uh, both problems lead to uh, failure in the evacuation of the lymph, in the transfer of the lymph, and that's all. Uh, that's why these patients have edema and other signs, symptoms. Which uh, about this we, we are going to talk. Uh, there are two main uh, types of the lymphedema. First type is congenital. Second uh, type is acquired or secondary. Uh, first congenital. Uh, the cause of congenital is a reduced uh, number of lymphatic nodes or lymphatic system due to some malformations and abnormalities, for example, milrose or mesh disease. Uh, but in secondary one, uh, there are some diseases which uh, lead, which cause this problem. For example, uh, it, it can be uh, some uh, malignancy maybe, or maybe uh, chronic venous insufficiency uh, about which we, uh, we have talked before. Uh, we have told before, then uh, some trauma may be some uh, parasitic disease, like for example, filariasis also uh, can lead to uh, lymphedema. Uh, then other uh, infectious uh, disease, like for example, uh, erysipelas, also uh, not. Uh, uh, at the same time, but after some period of time, maybe after years, uh, this patient also uh, can, uh, in this patient, edema can be developed and uh, lymphedema can be developed. So, uh, what is the pathophysiology of this disease? There are uh, three types of insufficiency uh, of uh, this first me uh, mechanical, second one is dynamic, and uh, third is combination, uh, which is caused by uh, valve insufficiency. So mechanical why, uh, one is the, uh, due to the uh, failure in transport of the lymph. Dynamic insufficiency is caused by the reduced capacity of the lymph system and combination is, as I said before, it's uh, um, because of the insufficiency of valves. Uh, so what uh, do these patients feel? They feel tenderness, uh, heaviness, uh, they feel uh, some uh, skin tension, edema every time, uh, pain due to edema, also some uh, change in sensation like numbness or paresthesia and uh, so on. Here you can see the congenital lymphedema, as we said, uh, due to some abnormalities, uh, malformations, and uh, uh, you can see here uh, uh, pathological uh, size of the limb due to edema. And this one is uh, secondary edema, as uh, here also a patient with uh, edema after fil fil filariasis, it's a parasitic disease. Uh, which damage to lymphatic system, and uh, this patient had uh, mastectomy and removal of uh, lymph nodes because of this, uh, because of uh, the failure of the transport of the lymph, uh, patient has pathological uh, edema, pathological change in size of the lymph uh, due to edema. Uh, so, and uh, methods uh, for the examination of patients, uh, it's uh, first of all lymphocytography, maybe lymphography, maybe uh, 
lymphocytography is uh, with using of radio radiological isotope. Uh, I think uh, you heard about this. And uh, lymph uh, lymphography may be ultrasound, also MRI and CT through uh, routine methods, uh, which are used in the uh, examination of patients with different disease. And the treatment of uh, lymphedema, first of all, as I said, it's compression. It's, uh, we have to improve the evacuation of the lymph from, the, first of all, we need to treat uh, the condition, the diseases which lead uh, to lymphedema, but uh, this is our first aim then, uh, make pressure to the uh, lymph uh, by special elastic stockings and uh, use uh, some symptomatic therapy using analgesics, uh, diuretics, for example, uh, message, uh, me it's mechanical uh, me uh, message, and uh, if uh, all of these conservative methods are ineffective, then we use some surgery methods, and uh, from surgery methods, for example, some by bypass operations, but they are not so widely used, uh, because of that they are traumatic and uh, as you know the size of lymphatic uh, vessels are very little but uh, for example uh, very uh, one of the effective methods it uh, is uh, lipomotic uh, liposuction it's a modern method uh, during this method fat with uh, this uh, fluid is removed uh, with special device and uh, uh, other method is low level laser therapy it's also uh, said to be used uh, to be useful to be effective uh, in some uh, in some uh, types of lymphedema So our next topic is necrosis. As you know, necrosis is a focal death of uh, some part of the body, and uh, uh, and it's a degradation with uh, enzymes, hydrolytic uh, enzymes, and uh, it's also accompanied with inflammation. So there are several par uh, several types of necrosis, and several causes of necrosis, and uh, one of the more uh, uh, one of the uh, most common uh, uh, cause is uh, hypoxia. Uh, maybe some, uh, it's also can, uh, chemical and physical agents uh, can co cause uh, necrosis, microbial agents and uh, immunological injury can cause. Uh, so uh, there are, as I said before, different types of the necrosis. And there are, uh, these are some of them. Uh, this, first of all, it's uh, coagulative necrosis. Uh, next one is uh, colloquative necrosis or liquefactive necrosis, caseous necrosis, fatty, fibrinoid, and gangrenous necrosis. So what is the coagulative necrosis? It's the most common type of necrosis, and it, uh, it uh, develops due to ischemia. Uh, mostly we see it in uh, some internal organs like kidney, spleen, and etc. Uh, so, uh, for example, here you can see the type of coagulative necrosis. So, uh, another type is uh, coagulative necrosis uh, when uh, it's uh, accompanied with the transformation of the tissue to uh, liquid uh, viscous mass. And uh, mostly it's um, seen when there is bacterial and fungal, inf uh, fungal infections. Um, here, for example, you can see in brain one of the example of liquefactive necrosis. Uh, another type is uh, caseous necrosis. Caseous necrosis is seen, for example, in tuberculosis and fungal fungal infections. And uh, other type here you can see caseous necrosis. Other type of necrosis is uh, fatty necrosis. Fatty necrosis mostly caused. Uh, uh, w uh, mostly, uh, it's mostly seen during uh, acute pancreatitis when uh, the enzymes of the proteolytic enzymes of the pancreas are released from the pancreatic tissue uh, to uh, adjust adjacent uh, uh, tissues and cause the necrosis of the fat tissue. And here we can see fat necrosis. And as here, for example, you can see this. Uh, type of uh, its example of fat necrosis you can see places of fat necrosis 
And uh, the last one is fibrinoid necrosis mostly. Uh, it's necrosis which is caused by immunological, for example, complexes uh, which are uh, uh, which are formed uh, during autoimmune diseases. Uh, so, uh, now we came to the gangrene. Next topic uh, about gangrene. Gangrene is the also it's a necrosis of the, some part of the body, and uh, with petrification. Uh, mostly there are two types. It's uh, dry and wet gangrene, and they have some uh, signs, characteristic signs uh, we, about this. We are going to talk. Uh, so uh, dry and wet are mostly uh, common types of the gangrene and also there is gas gangrene, uh, we'll talk about this, it's caused by uh, special uh, anaerobic uh, bacteria which is called Clostridia. Uh, so uh, here you can see types of necrosis, dry and wet, uh, as uh, here for example it's uh, dry necrosis. Uh, uh, mostly dry, uh, I, did, I, I mean uh, gangrene. Here you can see uh, the uh, dry gangrene. Uh, dry gangrene mostly is uh, uh, caused by ischemia of the. Uh, uh, if you remember, we talked about when we talked about uh, acute uh, limb ischemia, we said that uh, uh, acute limb ischemia uh, lead to the formation of gangrene and uh, dry gangrene, uh, actually it's dry gangrene. Another reasons, another causes of dry gangrene are thrombangitis obliterans, it's burger disease, also trauma can be renal disease, uh, ergot poisoning and uh, it's, uh, so on. Um, the most characteristic sign of dry gangrene is that it has demarcation line. What is the demarcation line? It's a special line which uh, uh, which separates the uh, necrotic tissues from the healthy one. Uh, for example, in wet gangrene we can't see this uh, line, but in dry gangrene we see it uh, visually. So, uh, in here in this picture you can see the example of dry gangrene. As you see, the demarcation line is here. And we know that this gangrene uh, only up to this level. level. Wet gangrene, it, uh, it uh, develops uh, in the moist tissues, mm, for example, in bowel, mo mouth, uh, cervix, and etc. And also diabetic foot is also a type of wet gangrene, but sores are also a type of wet gangrene. Uh, in, uh, for example, in uh, dry gangrene, mostly we see blockage of the arteries, but here mostly it's uh, uh, blockage, uh, blockage of the uh, veins. And uh, um, there is no uh, uh, separation line. There is no demarcation line, and uh, mostly uh, there is uh, there is inflammation here. We, s we can see inflammation here. For example, one of the examples of wet gangrene is the here is the uh, gangrene of the intestines due to the thrombosis of the veins. And in this picture, in this scheme, you can see uh, the. Uh, differential signs of two uh, gangrenes, for example, in dry gangrene, as uh, usually uh, they, uh, they uh, are located in limbs, uh, dry gangrene is located in limb, but in wet gangrene, wet gangrene mostly it's uh, internal organs like bowel. Uh, for then a mechanism of the uh, dry gangrene is mostly is arterial occlusion, uh, but in wet gangrene is venous occlusion. Uh, so about the demarcation line, as I said here, uh, always it, uh, present uh, the demarcation line uh, is presented. Uh, but here in wet gangrene we can't see this demarcation line. Putrefaction is limited because there is no blood supply. But here it's marked. Bacteria is all also due to the uh, poor vascularization uh, failed to survive. But here. They, uh, there are a lot of amount of these bacteria, uh, large, large amount of these bacteria, and a prognosis for dry gangrene is better than uh, for uh, wet one because uh, it uh, wet gangrene uh, can lead to the sepsisemia, to toxemia and sepsisemia. Uh, so, and. Uh, 
uh, about gas gangrene. As I said, gas gangrene is also a type of gangrene, which is caused by the uh, anaerobic uh, bacteria, which is called Clostridia. These patients have uh, very uh, swelli uh, swelling edematous uh, limb, uh, and uh, crepitated in uh, crept, uh, during palpation due to the uh, accumulation of gases because uh, these bacteria they uh, uh, they form uh, gases and uh, in here in this picture next picture you can see the patient with the gas gangrene uh, and uh, the treatment of this uh, of this gangrene is um, uh, make incisions why to make incisions to uh, make oxygen go past to the um, tissues and because this oxygen will destroy bacteria of uh, clostridias, clostridia, clostridial bacteria, uh, microbes. Uh, but uh, in case of dry gangrene and wet, wet gangrene, uh, we only have to make amputation. Uh, but uh, in wet gangrene, actually, uh, amputation, as I said before, it's, uh, it has to be made uh, uh, in the uh, on the level of uh, distal part, uh, distal third part of the thigh, but in dry gangrene, uh, we can uh, remove only this part, only necrotic part of the limb. For example, we can do uh, disarticulation uh, from the joints uh, of the foot, for example. And it depends on the. It's, uh, it it, it have to be chosen individually with the patient. But in the gas gangrene, first of all, we need to make uh, very uh, wide incisions, as I said, to provide the oxygen, uh, uh, to, to provide uh, the tissues with oxygen. And uh, this is the main treatment. And also, uh, to treat gas gangrene, uh, we use special uh, uh, serum and anti uh, antibiotics and uh, provide conservative treatment uh, with special drugs. Our next topic uh, now uh, is about bed sores. What, uh, what are bed sores? Bed sores, uh, another name of uh, bed sores is uh, decubitus or pressure ulcers. Uh, you know that it's ulcers which uh, are, are formed on the place of the uh, uh, bones, uh, above bones, and uh, due to uh, low pressure. So, and uh, let us talk about this bed source. Uh, most commonly place of uh, this source uh, areas where we can see them. Mostly uh, these are the, uh, for example, sacrum, uh, mostly uh, elbow, maybe knee, ankle. Uh, and uh, we see it in patients who have to stay uh, uh, for a long time in horizontal position because of the illness, because of disease. And for example, patients, uh, weak patients, patients with uh, some after uh, major surgery, for example, but uh, if they have to uh, lay down for, for example, they have to stay in horizontal position for a month, for example, 10, 20 days, and etc. And also, it depends on the on many factors which about we are going to talk. Uh, for example, it's uh, weight of the patient, uh, it's uh, humidity, uh, friction, and then uh, it's uh, uh, un uh, unlimited pressure and unrelieved pressure. Uh, it can be also temperature age of the per person. Uh, if per uh, this person patient have other uh, disease or, or not, and etc. Uh, so these and these are risk factors. Now in this picture you can see the places uh, about uh, where this uh, bed source can be seen uh, and uh, uh, causes. There are several causes uh, which uh, we can say. For example, uh, uh, this can be pressure. What is the pathogenesis of the bed source or the formation of bed source? Pressure lead to the uh, uh, decrease in blood supply and decrease in vascularization, and it uh, lead to, uh, it leads to ischemia and then uh, to tissue necrosis. Also, can be another uh, uh, reason, maybe another cause. It's uh, that uh, skin of the patient will stay on its own place, but muscle and fascia will go down uh, under gravity and it's also led to formation necrosis and also friction uh, uh, cause the 
uh, friction also causes uh, the damage to uh, epidermis. So in this picture you can see the first stage of uh, basal formation. Here only you can see the uh, damage to epidermis and uh, of course it is, uh, we will take this pressure to this place. We can treat a patient without uh, deeper damage but uh, unrelieved pressure will uh, Go, will uh, cause the next stage. Next stage is that uh, damage to epidermis uh, and uh, until uh, der uh, dermis, and uh, the third stage is all also uh, damage to uh, dermis, but uh, not uh, deeper than dermis. And fourth stage is uh, the uh, damage to all. Uh, epidermis, dermis, and also subcutaneous tissue, fascia, even uh, until maybe it can be uh, teal uh, bones. And also here you can see one type of the uh, bed source uh, with uh, necros uh, necro uh, necrosis of the tissues. And treatment of the bed source, first of all, it's uh, to relieve pressure because uh, if we see some hyperemia, uh, we have to change position of the patient, it's very important. Uh, then we can uh, make some drugs, some uh, medicines locally uh, to uh, improve uh, vascularization of this part uh, and to avoid the formation of necrosis. And then there are some types of debridement which are used to, tre to treat bed sores. One of them, this autolytic uh, debridement, uh, it means that uh, use special moist, uh, moist dressings and uh, to, uh, to uh, contribute uh, autolysis. Uh, the next uh, type of debridement is biological. Biological debridement uh, with uh, using of special maggots and uh, ma medical maggots uh, we, uh, and feeding um, necrotic tissues uh, with them uh, and by them. And uh, the next type is um, uh, uh, chemical uh, debridement uh, with uh, using enzy uh, enzymes, proteolytic enzymes. Uh, as you remember, it's a type of the uh, biological antisepsis. And the next one is mechanical debridement to take uh, off this necrotic tissue. And uh, also there is a sharp debridement with use, uh, use uh, scalpel and uh, scissors and other uh, sharp instruments and surgical debridement. Uh, also, uh, ultrasound methods is used for the uh, separation of necrotic and healthy tissues uh, in the uh, treatment of bed sores. And this inf uh, all information about sores. Now we are going to uh, go to the next topic about it's about trophical ulcers. So, uh, what's trophic ulcers? Trophic ulcers, uh, one of the definitions is uh, an ulcer due to the uh, impaired nutrition and also other, uh, other uh, definitions that uh, it's uh, the pressure ulcer which uh, caused by external tra trauma in uh, tissues uh, which are poor in uh, vascularization and uh, where nerve fibers and nerves are damaged and uh, so uh, in uh, by uh, we can see if we see, see it microscope by uh, by microscope we can see uh, depth of the tissues here. Uh, uh, here you can see the most uh, uh, the places where uh, we see common places where they can be seen. For example, is 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 to be rosity or occiput sacrum heel and etc. Uh, and uh, one of the types, uh, one uh, type of trophic ulcers is venous ulcers. Venous ulcers, uh, as you remember, we talked about it. Uh, venous ulcers are formed uh, when patient has venous insufficiency and have trophical change due, uh, due to the valvul, uh, valvular insufficiency and uh, due to the hypoxia uh, and uh, accumulation of uh, toxic products uh, in tissues. Uh, trophic uh, ulcer, venous ulcer is uh, formed. Uh, actually, mostly it's uh, in uh, the, as we said before, it's uh, a low part of the calf and uh, above uh, medial malleola, malleolus. Uh, these patients, uh, it's uh, not so painful, but patient uh, can feel pain. Uh, 
always inflammations uh, around this ulcer and uh, to treat these ulcers uh, first of all we need to um, uh, treat the disease condition which uh, lead to uh, formation of ulcer for example if it's a varicose disease we have to treat we have to make surgical uh, treatment and uh, then uh, after this we can uh, also make some locally treatment and uh, conservative treatment of this ulcer with anti-inflammatory drugs with uh, for example antiseptics some uh, ointments and etc and also uh, bandaging is also useful so uh, it, and as i said before uh, mostly they are located on low part of low limb uh, so uh, next our topic is about next our topic and I think it's uh, last one in this lecture is about fistula. What is fistula? Fistula it's a pathological connection between uh, one organ, one viscous and uh, uh, two viscous uh, lumen of uh, two viscous is its internal fistula two organs. And also it can be a uh, connection between the lumen of uh, one viscous and exterior, ex external fistula. And it can be also between two vessels. Uh, it's a special type of the fistula. Uh, so uh, he here in this picture, uh, you can see, the next picture you can see what is fistula. It's pathological way, as I said before. Uh, so there are two types of fistula. It can be they can be uh, congenital also. They can be acquired as many disease congenital. From congenital we can uh, indicate, for example, umbilical or, or uh, maybe uh, uh, thyroglossal, maybe maybe uh, tracheoesophageal. Uh, for example, in tracheoesophageal, uh, uh, when uh, we feed uh, a child. Uh, some parts of the meal can go to the uh, respiratory tract, tract and uh, uh, can uh, cause some problems with the breathing. And so an acquired one are, can be traumatic or, or can be mal inflammatory malignant, malignancy and yat uh, iatrogenic, it means that uh, uh, which was done by doctors. So traumatic uh, can follow surgery uh, can uh, appear after surgery. For example, uh, patients, uh, for example, ha uh, could, uh, have some surgery, uh, uh, and uh, after this, uh, sometimes uh, I will talk about this. Uh, we form these fistulas. Surgeons form these uh, f uh, fist fistulas, uh, like for example, formation of colostoma. As you know, this colostoma is uh, the uh, 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 type of surgery when uh, colon is stitched to the abdominal uh, wall, anterior abdominal wall, and all feces and gases come come uh, through this uh, uh, f through this part of the colon outside. Uh, we do it in some uh, cases. For example, if patient had uh, mechanical obstruct obstruction and peritonitis, for example, and we can't. Uh, due to, for example, uh, due to uh, cancer of the uh, colon, we can't make, uh, we can't, uh, we remove uh, tumor, but we can't stitch two parts of the uh, colon together because of the infection. Uh, because uh, that's why we uh, form a special colostoma. It's also fistula, and uh, we. Uh, after some period of time, for example, after uh, two or three months, we can make uh, uh, repeat surgery and uh, restore the lumen. We will make reconstructive surgery and uh, restore the lumen of the colon. So uh, other types, for example, it can follow delivery. Uh, for, uh, women with uh, traumatic delivery, uh, uh, they can. Uh, uh, some uh, in, in the during uh, traumatic delivery, uh, pathological uh, ways fistulas can be formed. For example, uh, between it can be between uh, urine bladder or vagina, and we call them vesica vaginal fistula or recto vaginal uh, between rectum and uh, vagina or utero vaginal between uterus and vagina. So 
It, they can be uh, inflammatory uh, due to the tuberculosis, for example, or actinomic causes, and uh, they can be malignant. So sometimes, for example, patients have uh, the cancer of the uh, rectum, and uh, this uh, cancer can be spread to the wall of the urine bladder and uh, cause the uh, formation of uh, way between these two organs. In this case, patient, the symptom will be uh, the uh, passing of feces uh, with urine. Or, for example, uh, also can be uh, in this vaginal fistula, uh, all urine will come from the defect in urine bladder outside and uh, of course all of these parts of uh, all, all of these fistulas have to be uh, restored and operated by surgical way and uh, another uh, type is iatrogenic it's uh, arteriovenous fistula which is used uh, during hemodialysis uh, so and uh, and other type also the uh, fistula connection between uh, with, we say portocaval anastomosis. Uh, this is also connection between uh, the uh, vessels of uh, the portal system and the cava system. Why to reduce uh, portal hypertension? Uh, as we said before, they can be external and internal. And also there are two, three types, epiphyllized, labial, and granulated. Epiphyllized, uh, they, uh, they are covered inside uh, with epithelium, uh, granulated uh, with granulations. Uh, labial one, in labial one, mucous uh, um, epithelium comes uh, until, uh, until a hollow organ comes to the skin, as I said before, for example, colostoma is the type of the labial uh, labial fistula and uh, for example sometimes uh, we put uh, gastrostoma we can put we can put for example also uh, basic stoma also can be uh, formed when uh, wall of the basic, uh, urine bladder uh, is stitched to the abdominal wall is also part of the labial uh, fistula in here you can see the uh, type of fistula uh, and uh, uh, symptoms of the fistula, fistulas that uh, patient has, uh, mostly it uh, doesn't cause pain, but patients see some pathological fluids uh, which pass uh, from the whole of the fistula, fistulas and so uh, uh, recurrence uh, of the disease. Uh, here you can see some types of the fistula. The, how uh, do we examine this patient? There are routine methods, uh, as I said before, in every disease, like, for example, hemogram, for example, X-ray examination, maybe MRI, biopsy from this uh, biopsy, maybe. Um, but uh, the, here, the uh, most important and effective method is fistulography. What is fistulography? Fistulography is when we insert special um, fluid, it's uh, lipoidal uh, iodine uh, dye uh, through the hole, to the hole, uh, to the f through the hole to the uh, lumen of the uh, fistula, and then we make X-ray examination and we see the way and direction and uh, the number of ways of fistulas. So it's very uh, informative and very useful uh, to then to to uh, um, to choose the uh, type of surgical operation and uh, to treat uh, patient to, uh, to operate patient successfully. That's why uh, that's why uh, it's very necessary make this is uh, this method of investigation of patients with fistulas. So dear students, uh, that's all. Today's uh, lecture is over. I think it was uh, informative for you. Thank you for your attention.